Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome to our Parent Boot Camp Summer 2020. I am Miss Cecilia Johnson, the Curriculum Assistant Principal. We are so excited that you all were able to <clears throat> able to be with us tonight. If you see that your friends aren't on and you have some some parents um, of some students that your 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 student is friends with, go ahead and invite them and tell them, hey, get on because they're sharing some good information tonight um, about Westlake and student student services. So again, I am Ms. Johnson. Thank you guys for being here. So at this time, we're going to do a little short quiz, a little Kahoot to see how much you know about Westlake High School and some of the things that we will be covering tonight. So right now you should see a Kahoot um, login. You can either do this on your phone through an app or just go to www.kahoot.it. But we're going to give a few minutes. Um, please know that there is a delay on our end just as a feature of um, Teams Live. So we are watching it to make sure we give everyone enough time to get in. I know we have 71 attendees and I see about 15 players. So we're going to give it maybe another minute and a half um, to make sure we have all of the people who would like to participate in. So we're going to give you all a few more minutes to log in.
All right, let's see who we have here. I see Papa Smurth. I see Marsha and Joy and Eric and we got Justin and Brown and Marsha and Rita's Beauty in here. So I see the nicknames coming in. We have 29 players, we got 70 attendees. So given a few more seconds for a couple of other people to get in and then we will run the quiz. So at 610, go ahead and press play. We're gonna go ahead and press start, Ms. Wingfield.
Good job, Brown. Good job, good job. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. Good job, Brown, for winning that. Hopefully, what you saw and some of the questions that you got right or that you got wrong, hopefully you were making note of those. I made a couple of notes. Um, I love doing the cahoots because it, it lets us know um, what our parents know, what they don't know, um, any misconceptions and things of that nature. And the first one that I noticed was about credits. So next up, we have Miss... <clears throat> We have Ms. Crawford who's going to talk to you about student services. So we're a couple of minutes off schedule, maybe about three minutes off schedule, and that's fine. I just want to make sure that you all had an opportunity to, to um, do that quiz and find out a lot of things. Um, when should parents be contacted from teachers? Who do you contact concerning schedules and things of that nature? So you will find out tonight a lot about schedules um, from the people that we have. So we just <clears throat> did our what do you know? I'm going to go over a couple of norms. You will see that there is a Q&A session that is available for you. Um, we will allow and encourage you to go into the question and answer and ask any questions that you may have. What I want to put out is a disclaimer. This event is about learning um, about the things that are on the agenda. It's about learning about student services essentials, student success skills, and learning more about Westlake being an NYP school. We ask that you refrain from asking any virtual learning questions, anything that has or has not been shared concerning um, remote learning, schedule changes, things of that nature, because that is not what this forum is about. Um, we've We'll make sure we follow up with you um, through email or anything of that nature if you have those questions. So please send those nature of questions to the principal um, or myself and we'll make sure we address those or at least point you to the Fulton County website where you can get more information concerning returning to school. Please make sure any questions that you ask are pertaining to the different sessions that these wonderful people have taken their time out to share with you. Um, also, there is a a chat feature in the chat. I've already dropped two documents that are there. Please make sure you go ahead and save those or or um, or download those download those for your reference. One is the frequently asked student services questions. What you should have already received from Mr. Robinson, he's he's emailed out the scheduling frequently asked questions. So those are very helpful. But these are the frequently asked questions that you'll hear about tonight. Um, from Miss Crawford, but she's not able to go over all of it because that's about a four page document. So make sure you go ahead and grab that PDF um, and save it so that you can have that. The other document is the Westlake course progression, the four year course progression. I believe every parent and every student needs to have access to that. It, it is on our website, but make sure you download this one. Um, it shows what the student should be taking each year of their four years here at Westlake. It shows what opportunities they'll have once they get into their junior year. You kind of see that there are more open spots where they can take dual enrollment and work-based learning and, and your schedule kind of frees up a little bit more. Um, ninth and 10th grade, it's a little bit more um, scheduled for you because we double block your math classes and some of your English classes. But this four-year course progression will help you um, through finding out where your student is and what they should take next. So make sure that you get those those two documents. So tonight, um, these are just a few of the norms. If you can post your questions, I am going to unshare. Um, I'm going to leave and go into the chat and try to um, answer some of those Q&A questions as they come along. So as you go through the student services essentials and Ms. Crawford goes through that, go ahead and put your questions in the Q&A session, not in the chat. The only thing we have in the meeting chat is for you to download those documents. And again, this is being recorded, so Mr. Robinson will send out the recording. So first up, we have Ms. Crawford. She is our wonderful, one of our wonderful guidance counselors. Her, she services the last names DB through I. Um, so if your student's last name is DB through I, she is the wonderful counselor that will be assisting you. So I'm going to mute myself and turn it over to Miss Crawford. All right. Good evening. Good evening, parents. Thank you so much for um, logging in today because we do have some helpful information that we want to share. And again, I am Erica Crawford and my 
I serve the students that have last names that are non magnet that um, have the last names DB through I. So I look forward to meeting those parents and all of you as well uh, at some point. All right. So how do you go about meeting your counselor or teacher? In order for you to be able to meet with your counselor, we have on our Westlake website under the actual counseling page, we have a Calendly link that will share that um, will take you directly to being able to schedule an appointment with us. Um, if you go on there, you will see and I'll go through the list to show you who to tell you who the actual counselors are. So if you have a student coming in for the magnet program or for the I or full IB or really just part of the magnet program, um, Miss McAdoo um, will be your actual counselor. If your student's last name is A through DA and they are not in the magnet program, Dr. Owens will be your count, your child's counselor. Again, there's myself, Ms. Crawford, serving students DB through I. Ms. Harrison services those students that have last names J through O. Ms. Jackson services those students that have um, last names P through SE, and she's our head counselor, as well as Ms. Perry, who will service those students that have last names S, F through Z. So again, you go onto the website, the Westlake website, and you can schedule an appointment or you can call the student services department at, four, at the 470-254-6400, which is the main number, and you will be able to go through the extension for student services and speak to our guidance secretary, Ms. Keel, and her extension is 46431. So again, if you can't remember the extension, you just call the main number for Westlake and you wait for the um, student services option. If you want to schedule a parent teacher conference, you will if you're if it's just one student, I'm sorry, one teacher, then you can email that particular teacher directly to set up a meeting and you can still go onto the Westlake website and up under the staff um, tab, you will see something called directory and you will scroll down to find that teacher's email address to be able to find to be able to schedule directly with them or if you want to have a meeting with all of your your child's your children's teachers then you would just go ahead and contact the student services and speak directly to Ms. Keel again she's our guidance secretary and she can be reached at the main number again and you would just go to the tab for um, student services all right so moving on to what would we say, if you can go to the next screen, we would say what would be the role of a counselor? So we service a lot of different roles when it comes to student achievement, when it comes to curriculum and college and career planning, social and emotional health, we service a lot of different things. Um, but our, our biggest thing is student achievement. So that's gonna be coming up with a graduation plan. When your child first come to Westlake, we're gonna, um, we're going to review a lot of times we review what they did in eighth grade. If they have any eighth grade credits, then we'll make sure that we fix their schedules accordingly to be able to um, to be able to um, show that they actually have received those credits and move on to the next progression. So again, if you follow through like how Ms. Johnson talked about the four year progression sheet item that's located in the chat, that's going to be a helpful tool because it's going to be what we utilize to be able to do your child's schedule, which I'll talk about next. But we also do academic advisements. We also do transcriptions, which involves if you're a new to West Lake and you're not necessarily an incoming ninth grader, but say you're an incoming 10th, 11th, or 12th grader, you may have credits that you've done at another school and you want those credits to be applied to your West Lake transcript. So then that's where we as counselors will do what was called a transcription to be able to add those courses that you've already taken at another school and apply it to your Trans, your current transcript for you. We also do a lot of coordinating with summer school. We do coordinating if your child has, um, if, your ha if your child has certain types of services like a 504 or an IEP, we will help and assist with those 
roles. We also help with any post-secondary, so we do lots of letters of recommendations. Um, we also do dual enrollment, go over all of those inf that information. We also will assist with parent-teacher conferences if you actually would like for us to be a part of it. But usually parent-teacher conferences are just that with a parent and the teacher. However, if you request for us to be there, we will happily, um, we, we would get that scheduled and will happily be there. Um, in addition to, we also do what's called college and career planning. So that that falls on under a lot of whether that's um, dual enrollment, your four year, again, your four year plan. So the great thing about coming to West Lake is you're going to come here and you're going to be able to take you're going to be able to take those courses that's going to definitely put you on the right track if you're planning to go if your child is planning to go to college. We also have a lot of different social and emotional supports. We we help provide with crisis intervention. We collaborate a lot with our school social worker when it comes to the crisis intervention for any type of additional services that may need be needed. We are also mandated reporters, and it's not just really the counselor that's mandated reporters, but that's all of Westlake High School employees. And we also serve on the care team alongside with our school psychologist and our again our school social worker and our or school um, and any other supports that we may have that's available in the district to be able to service your so your child's social and emotional needs. So a plethora of information. <laughs> so we actually do a lot of um, a lot of it centers around we, you may talk with the counselor a lot about the schedule, but as you can see, there's a whole gamut of things that we have that we do for your child to be as successful as possible. So we can move on to the next one. So here comes a big one about scheduling. And I know you probably either receive your child's schedule in the mail and have lots of questions about how to go about, how, how do I go about making a change for my child's schedule? Well, we do one of the things, if you're an incoming, uh, incoming freshman, um, once you get a chance to go through your first semester and once you get to your second semester, which is the spring semester, we have what's something called course request. This means that you make your child has the ability or you can help um, can make a request for something to be on your schedule for next year because we have a multiple opportunities where your child can actually um, where changes to your child's schedule can be made. So one of the questions I did see on the Kahoot was, is a course request the same as a schedule? And it's not. It's just simply that, just that of a request. So you're not, you may actually make a request, but it doesn't necessarily mean it will be something that, be, that will be placed on your schedule because there are a lot of different things that we have to take into account of when it comes to putting certain requests onto your schedule. So uh, if you remember the, on the previous slide, we do, our counselors do, a lot of the um, making sure that you're in line with your high school requirements, your high school graduation requirements. So those are going to be those courses like your core classes, like your English, your math, your science, your social studies. Those are going to be the courses that we're going to make sure that your child has on their schedule. And we make sure that we um, in any other additional courses that you may need to graduate are going to be on your schedule. And then those things like your elective courses um, will be something that we allow for you to be able to make those um, requests to be changed. Like if you want, if your child has sociology on their schedule and they may want to actually change that, um, there is a, a, a a actual process for you to be able to change it, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we'll be able to change it to if your child wants a PE instead of sociology. It just kind of depends on a lot of different things. Um, so students do have, so going and talking about those multiple opportunities of when do I, when can my child get a schedule change, we have what's called sneak peek. We'll have, um, normally during this time, we will probably have you where you'd be able to do a sneak peek like how you received it in the mail. It's kind of a sneak peek of your schedule. And if any type of changes are needing to be made, there was a link that was sent out. And hopefully all of you received that link because that's going to be, that link will close on the 31st. So we, that's going to be another opportunity for you to be able to make a change. And then we also have 
once school starts per our county policy, students can actually request to have certain things changed on their schedule within the first week of school by completing a, a schedule change request form. Now, we also ask that schedule change be granted only with the following stipulations. For example, if there's already a, a credit on the, your particular schedule that you've had, for example, if you, um, if you already took a uh, let's just say uh, general PE. If you've already taken general PE and you see general PE 2 on your schedule, but you've already taken general PE 2, then we will make those type of provisions for those type of changes. But if you see something, but if it, it, it be, uh, and to be honest with you, we have, diff we have four different areas for general PE. So we have general PE 1, we have general PE 2, 3, and 4. But if you have something, maybe that's not a good example, but I would probably say maybe like if you have lifetime sports and you've already had it, then that would be something we would probably look at changing. Or if you've already had a sociology class, then we would probably look at changing that. Um, or if you're actually missing something, say, for example, you're missing your English class, you know you need four years of English, then and you don't see that on your schedule, then we know that we probably need to, that could be a, an oversight or, or something with the system, so we know that we need to put that English course back on your schedule. So things like that we look at as important things that we definitely need to change, but again, elective changes are made as spaces available for the same actual period. So if your child is taking uh, and I'm going to use sociology again. If your child is, t is taking sociology at second period on A day, then and they want that particular um, course to be changed or in wanting another course, well, we're going to look only at second period A day for another elective that may be available and understand that that may not necessarily happen because it may not be another elective that's available at that particular time period. So, Another thing that we talk about is how many classes that you, we actually offer. We have eight class periods, four on A day, and your child will have four on B day, which also, which actually you get an opportunity to earn eight credits for each year. So when we talk about, when we go into the graduation requirements, you'll need, well, we'll talk about the graduation requirements on the next slide, but however, you only need, and I'll actually just go through it real quick, 23 credits to be able to graduate. So if you need 23 credits to graduate, we actually offer 32 credits for you to be able to take, and I'll break that down a little bit further for you. So going forward on how can you get into an honors or an AP or an IB class, students are placed in those classes based off of a teacher recommendation in the spring. So if you want your child to be able to take one of those classes, we do offer that particular opportunity off of based off of the teacher recommendation. However, we also require for it, if you do not get a teacher recommendation, you still want your child to be in one of those type of classes, then a recommend uh, you have to complete what's called a course, a course waiver. And in that, it, the parent must actually sign, read and sign it to say that you understand that if your child is placed in this, your child will not be taken out of the actual honors, the AP class. So we definitely require for you to have those uh, waivers on file before we will actually consider placing your child in an honors or an AP course. What are the different pathways that are offered? We have various pathways. We have audio video technology. We have dance pathway. We have drafting and design pathway and engineering, fine arts. We have a plethora of them. Graphic design, JROTC, law and public safety, we also have um, music and we have a sports entertainment and we have sports medicine. So going forward, if you see something on your child's schedule, for example, if our incoming ninth graders see an, a pathway that's on their schedule that maybe you may not necessarily want to take, it may be on your schedule because that's the thing that we can get that we can fit that best fits in your schedule at that time. However, you do have an opportunity to change your pathway at the end of your ninth grade year going into your 10th grade year. So that way you will be able to, um, so that way you'll be able to get into the, hopefully in the one that is of interest to your child. So 
And if you don't, um, there and there will be, we can talk about possible pathway choices with your counselor. So again, hopefully you remember who your child's counselor is, but you will be able to. So going forward, I'm sorry to go forward with the graduation requirements. Again, like I stated that the, your child will need 23. The minimum is 23 credits to graduate. However, the, at Westlake, you have the opportunity to get 32 credits. So the minimum would be the four years of English, four years of math, four years of science, four and three years of social studies. We also are requiring three years of a world language and it has to be in that same world language and also four elective, um, four hours of elective courses. So these things will definitely be um, explained to you again with going over it if you don't understand where your child is or if your child needs assistance with making sure they get back on track, we have those particular um, pieces for you or your counselor will be able to break that down for you. So some of the questions may lie, you may have the question of if I need a 504 or if, I, if my child has a 504, if my child has an IEP or certain types of services, we do have people that will help you, assist you with those. We have Mr. Huffman, who's our 504 coordinator, and we also have Ms. Renisha Daniel, who's over our, our, um, our special education department. She's um, considered our instructional support teacher. And so those, again, I'm gonna, just in case your child has any type of services needed, Mr. Huffman is the 504 coordinator and his information will, can be found on the website or within this particular PowerPoint. I do believe this will probably be something that will should be shared with you so that you can get his email address. And Ms. Daniel will be the person who's over our special education department. If your child ever need, is in e need of graduation support, maybe they are a little off track and maybe need to go to what's called McLaren or Skyview for additional support. We have Ms. Rhonda Hudson, who's over our graduate, who's our graduation coach and over that particular, who can help facilitate your child getting into those schools who will help you get back on track if you, your child is not actually as successful with earning the amount of credits that they need to graduate. And so, um, and these things will be taught to you a little bit further as well. And for the sake of time, I am going to um, go for, go ahead and go forward, but just know that you do have the opportunity to be able to talk with your child, your child's counselor a little bit further into if you need any type of graduation support. So going forward to dual enrollment. Dual enrollment is something that we, it used to be where ninth graders could do dual enrollment, but this year they have, because of our, um, the house bill that was sent out, they actually are now require only allowing 10th through 12th graders to do dual enrollment. And so, and it's also a cap, and I'm sure a lot of you have heard that there is a cap on how many credits that you can take at the particular dual enrollment college and there is a 30 total credit hour maximum so we can break this down and you can you will be able to sit down with your counselor to determine on if dual enrollment is something that would be helpful for your child especially when it comes to your their senior year or their junior year when their schedule kind of frees up a little bit and when i say freeze up meaning that you may have more electives than you may have multiple elective courses because a lot of your required courses have already been completed with 9th, 10th, and 11th grade. Um, dual enrollment is a definite um, definite uh, program that you would probably want to look into for your child to be able to get those college credits so that way it can help them once to be able to once they get matriculate to college. So we can we will definitely talk a little bit further about that especially once you actually get to that particular point as far as those at the end of your child's ninth grade year going into their 10th grade year we will talk a little bit further about that so go forward and to the next slide so any information that when it comes to student services to, when you talk about work-based learning if your child wants to get a job once they get to be their senior year because maybe they've completed a lot of their uh, requirements or, or a lot of their high school requirements then they can do something called work-based learning we can talk further about that and that's also in the faqs that was in the course that was in the chat um, any type of waivers you would come to we have a a wonderful um 
college and career advisor, Mr. Tony Roan, who actually deals with a lot of the waivers for SAT and ACT. If you need work permits, driving permits, enroll, anything about enrollment and withdraw, the withdrawal process, that's where you would come to student services. And one of the, if I can leave you with anything, it would be to say, if you're, as your child is in high school, one of the key pieces that is going to be important for you as a parent is to make sure your information in our infinite campus is always up to date because that's going to be the best way that anyone will be able to contact you the way that you get information because a lot of information goes out and we try to do a good job in getting you information early on so that you would know how to be able to help your child matriculate through high school but just keeping your information your whether it's your phone number your email or any or um any contact information up to date because as we as we've seen some people may have gotten their child schedule some people may not have gotten their child schedule based upon their address was either correct in the system or maybe you've moved but i can't say it enough that one of the great the the good things and making sure that the one thing that you, the important things that you want to do is make sure that your child's um that your contact information is up to date. So without further ado, I think that will, will be the end of our student services essentials. And again, I thank you all so much and I look forward to meeting you whenever we get up under from up under this um, virtual platform. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much, Miss <clears throat> Ms. Crawford. Um, we are actually ahead of time, about 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and address um, some of these questions that are coming in because you guys are posting some great questions. So if you all don't mind, I know Ms. Dr. Owens is set to go next. So we're going to let her go in about, um, I'll take about five minutes if you all don't mind so I can go over some of this. First thing is we are finding out, first we're very grateful for all of the technology that we have. That's the first thing. We're grateful for Microsoft Teams, but please know that we're learning it um, just, just at the same time that um, you all are being able to experience it. So the chat feature that's open that we see on our end, I found out that you all cannot see it. So that means you cannot see the two documents that I put in there. Um, there is a fix for that, but I would have to end this meeting in order to fix it. So we definitely don't want to end the meeting and ask you guys to come back in. So we do have this being recorded and we are going to send this out. I will make sure those two documents go out. But what you've seen on those screens with Ms. Crawford, those are the exact copies. It, it came directly from the document um, called Student Services Frequently Asked Questions. So she did an amazing job going over that. So we will make sure that those are sent out along with the recording so that you can go back, go back and see a few things. I noticed that one of the questions that um, quite a few people missed was how many credits does my child need to graduate? Westlake does offer 32, but your student only needs 23 to graduate. So she covered that as well. So hopefully those people who were not able to get that answer correct now have now have a little bit um, more understanding about that. The other thing that we heard in the question and answer that I'm reading is the Kahoot. The Kahoot was um, kind of off and we are take, making note of that. So this is our first time adding a Kahoot to a live, a quiz to a live from an outside source. By default, Microsoft Live tells you, Microsoft Team Live tells you that there's automatically a 10 to 20 second delay just because of Microsoft Live. So then adding in a external, an external website delayed it even more. So some of you, I saw that maybe only nine to 11 people were able to answer questions at a time. So we're making sure that we we go over all of those questions as well because they all are included in the presentation. So I know you guys like Kahoot. I saw someone say that Kahoot was great. So for those who are able to get those answers in, hopefully you're at the point now where you've gotten some, some answers already just from what Ms. Crawford was able to review. Another question that I have um, is concerning the schedule changes. So um, we sent out schedules on July 15th. Um, we sent out schedules because another thing that's new this year, as we all are adjusting to COVID and different things, a lot of people don't realize that last year at this time, we were still in e-school. 
we did not build schedules, nor did we um, do any schedule changing in Infinite Campus. Infinite Campus rolled out for us when school started. So at the beginning of August is when we got our first taste of Infinite Campus. I say all that to say we are learning um, all of the, the do's and the don'ts and all of the little loose ends and holes that are in Infinite Campus that we didn't deal with in, in eSchool. And we're also learning the pluses of Infinite Campus. I say that because we told you all that we were going to be able to open up the platform so you could see the schedules in the campus portal, but that it was not an option with Infinite Campus. So because of that, we got together and said, hey, we've made a promise to these parents, let's mail them out. So we got a team together and in less than um, 36 hours, we had over 2,100 envelopes labeled, stuffed, and sent out. So by Monday, we're thinking you got them, but then we realized with COVID and the pandemic, the United States Postal Service may not be moving as quickly. So those who have emailed us, we've done our best to go ahead and verify your identity and get those schedules out. But what I love is when I get that email and they say, oh, my bad, it just came in the mail. We got some of those responses today. So it has taken anywhere from three to almost 15 days for the mail to come. Um, and, and get to your house and things of that nature. So with that being said, if you still have not gotten your schedule, go ahead and shoot us an email and we will we will um, do a little snippet and send that to you. But that is the reason why we've had some of the, the different delays in, in people receiving their schedule and things of that nature. Because we were wondering, hey, we have the label that was sent out. There are no more schedules here and the labels match what the parent is saying the address is what happened. So when people start telling us that, hey, it just came in the mail today. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. I just got it. That let us know that there's a delay with the Postal Service as well. So the we extended the window. At first it was the 24th. Then it got extended to the 29th. And now we've extended it to the 31st for you to go into that link and um, ask for a course change, um, schedule change. And our counselors will start on, once we close that link, they will immediately start to kind of funnel through those changes and see which ones are, excuse me, which ones are able. Ms. Crawford did a great job of distinguishing between a course request and a schedule because what you saw in May and June and what you were able to see then, that was not a schedule. That was just a course request showing what your student could possibly have. Once we get together and start saying, hey, this class falls this period, this falls that period, it may not fit the way you think it was going to fit when you saw that course request. So that is what we're doing now. We're making those adjustments to say, hey, this student wanted this, but because they're taking this AP class here, they're taking this um, SEC class here, it won't fit. So let's give them the next choice that was on their list. So that answers some of the questions where people were saying, hey, my student didn't get their first choice of pathway. My student, this didn't happen. This didn't happen. So um, that is why you kind of see a difference when your student may have wanted may have wanted African history, but they ended up with current issues. When it comes to electives, we have to put it put in what fits at that block. Um, pathway change. If you desire a pathway change, ninth grade is when you need to be making those decisions. You can change your pathway in tenth grade, but that means tenth, eleventh, and twelfth grade. You are taking those three consecutive classes. The question was, can my student graduate without completing a pathway? Yes, but it is not recommended. What pathways do? At the end of the pathway, the student is able to take different certification tests and things of that nature. You're also helping the CCRPI of the school because it goes towards college and career readiness and the school gets points for those things. So it is a state, a state expectation that every student completes a pathway and that is a definite um, expectation of Fulton County because we have a goal of 90% of students being college and career ready and that is meaning that they complete a pathway. So um, that answers that question. So I believe that's all. Hold on, we have some new ones. Couple of more. I noticed the audio tech starts in 10th grade. Did the audio video technology option change for ninth grades to opt in? We have one or two sections of of audio tech, we have been able to offer one or two, but normally that starts in 10th grade simply because that's limited to one teacher who usually has only room to take 30 kids in an intro class. So that is why we say that normally starts in 10th grade um, because we also usually have a digital tech class that we wanted those students to go through first in order for them to be able to know how to use the camera and things of that nature. But yes, we um, do have a section of audiovisual tech. 
but it is limited to only 30 students. So it is easier um, if the student hasn't already had opportunity to get it on their schedule that they can also start in 10th grade. All right. Um, making changes to infinite campus to add family members. That is, I will type that in. I will go in and type that reply. That is Miss Holland. She is our registrar and she'll be able to help you with that. You will have to, of course, um, bring in or either fax her or email her some identification. So she has her process for that and we will make sure that um, she's able to handle that. And I will type these replies as well. The ninth grade recording or Ninth grade orientation recording is going to be sending sent out as well, as well as um, all of the sessions. And then we have 10th grade tomorrow and I believe 11th grade Friday. Don't quote me on that. I don't know the exact days, but I know they've been sent out. Um, so. So um, look forward to that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Dr. Owens and I will continue to publish and answer these questions in the chat. So keep posting them. We have a few administrators on and I want to thank them for being on tonight who also can go in and answer some of these for us. So I am going to mute and turn it over to Dr. Owens. OK, well, greetings. I am Dr. Owens. I proudly serve students with the last name beginning with A through DA. I hope all is well with you and your family, that you're staying safe, and we look forward to seeing you really soon. This portion of the present presentation will look at those skills essential for success at school, life, and work. I know as counselors, we encourage our students to start with the end in mind. So we want to know from the very onset, what are your post-graduation plans so that we can better support our students? Are you applying to college? Are you joining the military or entering the workforce? And regardless of those plans, we know that there are some key practices that if implemented consistently and with fidelity, we know it should prove to be successful and ultimately our students will achieve their ultimate goal. OK, their number one goal. OK, so what is an effective learner? Studies show that an effective learner possess certain traits and certain behaviors. And at this time, we're going to do a, a quick activity and it should take only about two minutes. We're going to look at these 14 statements. And as you look at these statements, we want you to think uh, like your student. I'm sorry, like your child would and how would your child respond to these statements? OK, so let's take this opportunity right now to look at those 14 statements. Concerning your child and how do you think they would respond? So let's take about two minutes to do just that. OK, and if you're done, you can respond. I'm hoping uh, that's OK, Miss Johnson, if they can respond in the chat as to how many yes. How many of those um, their student or child would respond yes to and for those no's, we want to definitely use that as an opportunity and basically a point of discussion so that when you're planning um, your next step on how to become an uh, even more effective learner. Look at those behaviors and see how you can factor those in. Okay, next slide. We know the key to becoming an effective student is learning how to study smarter and not necessarily harder. And there are two main skill sets that contribute to success. You have your learning skills and those tasks includes behaviors that help us learn and to retain what we learn. For example, like time management, note taking, reading effectively. And there's a second component to that learning uh, skills. Component, the second component, I'm sorry, is about how you learn and your learning style. What is your preferred method of taking in information? And we know there are four different learning styles. Are you a visual learner, auditory, kinesthetic, or are you a read write? kind of learner, OK? And we're going to go in greater detail 
uh, as this presentation goes on. And the second skill set is called self-efficacy. And it's basically a person's belief in their ability to succeed. And basically, again, do you believe that you can accomplish what it is that's set before you? OK, next slide. So let's go a little deeper. OK, under learning skills, you have time management, organization and study habits. And here are some tips. That can help you um, to improve your time management, help you with organization and maximize your study time. And I'm just going to highlight a few um, and things that we really encourage our scholars to do. You definitely want to create uh, a to-do list and you want to record all the things you need to accomplish within that week. And we ask students to focus on one thing at a time that they want to accomplish. We want you to prioritize your tasks to ensure that you are that the most critical and the time sen sensitive tasks are being completed first so that our grades are not impacted because we missed a due date because we were trying to do so much. We want to definitely eliminate distractions so that you are able to attend to the task on hand. Uh, course syllabus is listed and this is a, a, a document that we highly recommend that both parent and the child become very acquainted with because in this syllabus you are going to find class at the teacher's expectations. You're going to see your rubrics, the grading. Um, and if you have any questions after reading that, you definitely want to follow up with the teacher. OK, and while you're studying, we're asking our students because uh, we really want to be focused and we want to maximize um, our outcomes. We want to clear off our desktops. We want to close unread windows on our computers. We want to put our phones on silent. We want to turn off the television and um, Google has a Google Calendar has a really great uh, feature called Rescue Time and it will automatically block all distractions, websites, social media, and you may want to enable those when you are studying, OK? Um, and procrastination. This is a big one. And so this is something we um, definitely want our students to create a schedule and you can do it a print or digital. You want to create this calendar so you're able to see the big picture. And on this calendar, you want to include deadlines and due dates. Uh, there's an old saying, why put off today what you can do tomorrow? And for whatever reason, tomorrow never really comes, so it never really gets done. So that's why we want to create a calendar. And we suggest that you place this calendar in a common space uh, and it helps to cre uh, create um, accountability and that way parents can kind of check in regularly to see your progress and to determine what level of support is needed. Okay, uh, Study time. Um, we suggest that when you study that you actually set a schedule and stick to it. We even advise students to share your study time with your friends and family so that this time goes uninterrupted, that this time is protected. OK, uh, we want our students to get organized. Um, and when you get organized, it's, it's a great time saver. You're freeing your space from clutter. You have all your material and supplies on hand, so you're not wasting time looking for things. And another thing we recommend is that during your downtime, you definitely want to take advantage of your downtime. So when you have those breaks, spring break, Christmas break, and I know our seniors definitely take uh, advantage of that. They use that time to research scholarships, applying to colleges, requesting transcripts, uh, you name it, but we definitely want to take advantage of our downtime. OK, and one other thing about study time, we want you to commit to studying about five times a day. This is what research shows that five times a day per week and about two and a half hours a day. Um, and students who actually commit to that tend to do really, really well. And when it comes to note taking, I want to say a little bit about note taking as well. Um, and I like to stress to students, you want to really get in the habit of taking really good notes because what you find when you're not taking really good notes and your notes are not concise, you find yourself having to reread the text when it's time for evaluation and test. So uh, here are some tricks that you can use. 
OK, you can abbreviate and we know our kids text really, really well. So this should come almost natural for you. So we don't want to spend too much time trying to capture everything that the teacher is saying. But those main you know, key points, you can also create a bullet point system. You can turn your notes into flashcards. You can um, arrange study group sessions. You can create new information. Um, by using pictures, but more importantly, definitely make sure that your notes are concise, something that you can reread opposed to having to reread the textbook for um, exams and things of that nature. Next slide. Okay. Self-efficacy is directly tied to academic achievement. If it's low, it definitely impacts your confidence, your motivation, your behavior, and your outcome. And so what it looks like, basically, um, and if you wonder exactly what it looks like, do you ever see a, I'm sorry, let me stop. Do you, uh, or have you ever seen a student that would rise to the occasion who face challenges and find ways to overcome? Well, low self-efficacy is just the opposite. You have those students who tend to uh, give up without even trying, they feel defeated. And so self-efficacy plays a critical role in this dynamic. So therefore, when we have to balance constructive feedback while taking the time to uh, build a student's self-confidence, especially if they faced failure. Okay. And we can combat this in several ways. OK, we can celebrate small victories. We can even peer model. We can share our failures. We can talk about our errors. We can even share how we doubted we were able to do it. And we always want to demonstrate how we circle back and we were actually able to achieve. Uh, we can provide prompts to help these students who are suffering. Uh, we can set goals with that student or with your child and provide feedback. And we can have the students to uh, evaluate their progress provide opportunities for students to problem solve and always remember the value of positive reinforcement. And one thing we want students to do is have more verbal uh, time because it slows down the critical thinking process. OK. Next slide. Okay. And so Students who suffer with a, a, a lack of motivation and suffer from low self-efficacy, these are students that we definitely want to be engaged. We want to encourage them to interact with their peers. We want them involved. Um, as, uh, as parents, we want you to kind of monitor their social media. Uh, you will see a, a list of look for's here if you look at the screen. And if you see your child exhibiting some of these signs and behaviors and it's becoming alarming, uh, there are some resources within, within our district. Uh, we know um, Georgia Crisis Helpline is one, but if they're starting to, uh, if their grades are being affected, we definitely have a grad coach. We have our counselors. Um, if there's need for extra tutorial, you can definitely tap in to the classroom teacher uh, for additional support. But again, if they're having those signs and symptoms or exhibiting any of those behaviors, you definitely want to uh, tap into Georgia crisis. And I cannot stress the importance of the benefit of rest. So we want to make sure that our students are getting adequate uh, rest. Okay. Next slide. And parents, here is a list of things that you can do. Um, you definitely want to um, keep the lines of communication open. You want to determine what support is needed. Again, you want to mon monitor their learning skills and their efficacy skills. You want to be realistic about your child's areas of growth and glows, their strengths, uh, their weaknesses. If you have some concerns, you definitely want to know um, exactly who you can speak with or who they can speak with. You definitely want to teach them how to advocate for themselves. And, and that depends too on the nature of the concern. Um, if they can always bring you in onto the conversation. But more importantly, take a, lit, uh, a look at that list of things that you can do to help your child as they matriculate throughout high school. But more importantly, we want our students to have fun. We want to factor in fun. Okay, we believe in work-life balance. 
And this concludes my presentation. And if you have any questions, um, um, as counselors, our information is on the website. You can always email us. We do have uh, phones that you can contact us, landlines and cell phones. And again, I am Dr. Owens, and thank you so much for this opportunity. Have a great evening. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Owens. Um, some great information. I'm taking notes myself. I'd never heard of rescue time. I told them, I said, you all are the experts, so share whatever you feel parents need to know. We have an amazing, amazing team of, of counselors. So um, we know that our students are in good hands. She talked about how much you should study um, a week and the five times a day, and she kind of outlined that for you. So I am even excited about going back and listening to the recording that will be shared will be shared with you. Again, we're um, a little ahead of schedule, um, so I'm going to take a few minutes. I am publishing the questions so that people people can um, see their answers. And those who are here, I know we have, I know Ms. Hickman is in, and uh, Ms. Wingfield, and Dr. Owens, and Ms. Crawford, if they're still in, are helping me with some of these questions. Um, so I will take a second to address a few for about five minutes since we, um, I heard great job counselors. We appreciate that. Um, that definitely feels good. As you all know, the counselor's job is not an easy one. So a lot of times we hear more of the, um, more of the other side. So we don't get a lot of the great jobs. So I do appreciate that. And I know that means a lot. That means a lot to the counselors. Um, I'm very grateful for them taking their time out tonight. Um, when they could be with their families and having dinner and resting, but they chose to um, and were and were excited about coming out speaking to you all tonight. So a definite thanks to Dr. Owens and Ms. Crawford, um, two of our new newer counselors um, within the last year. So we're excited about what they bring to to the table. Um, let's look at some that have been published. And if I don't get to your question right now, don't worry, we will be answering all of them. Um, right now we have 22 questions in queue, so I will go through and answer them. Um, and I'm going to actually give Wingfield a little bit more time to talk about MYP because there are um, a lot of a lot of misconceptions around IB and MYP. So that gives her a bit of time. So at 17, we're going to let her go ahead, um, go ahead and start. But I want to go over a few of these. Daughter came from a charter school. How do we know what courses are available? The four year course plan that is going to be sent out. Um, that is what I had in the chat, the four year course plan. And I may, since we are ahead of schedule, I may actually pull it up on, on my screen so you all can see it at the end when I go over a quick review. So I will show you what that four year plan looks like, but that tells you um, exactly what we offer at Westlake High School. Mute that okay. Um, charter school, we talked about that. My student is in the dance pathway. Does she still need to take personal fitness? There is a personal fitness exemption. Um, let's talk a second about that. If the students are in, if they've taken, um, they're participating in band, they're participating in varsity sports, they're on the dance team. Um, on the dance team, so that's a little bit different from the dance pathway. So on the dance team, um, ROTC, and there are a few others. Um, they will have to go to their sponsor and their sponsor will have a um, form. It's called an, a personal fitness waiver form. Usually by the 11th grade at the latest, we need that filled out because it, the 11th grade is when we take personal fitness. So um, we move personal fitness a little bit later in the um, years into their junior and senior year simply because we have so many students that are active in, in band and in football and basketball and all of the different sports and ROTC, they can exempt their personal fitness. So once your student begins to be active in these different clubs and organizations, go ahead and speak to that sponsor or that coach around November is the time we're looking for those waivers to start coming in. You can go ahead and speak to that coach and that coach should be able to provide you that. You bring it to the counselor. The coach just has to um, verify and put their signature acknowledging that you have actually completed the required amount of years. So yes, if your student is not just being in the pathway, they have to be on the dance team because it's showing pretty much that you, it's showing pretty much that you it's um, that you've met the requirement of the physical, the physical fitness. Um, the other thing I want to talk about, we got charter school study habits, which 
what study platforms will the teachers use for things like practice tests? What's going to happen on um, next week when we have our open house? You will have the opportunity, um, you and your student, it's going to be a virtual open house where you'll be able to go in just like if you were doing the physical open house and talk to the teachers and hear their virtual presentations. And in that presentation, they'll tell you what they're going to be using. What Fulton County has done and your student, if your student is a current Fulton County student, they can see this. It's called Launchpad and they log in with their ID, their Fulton County ID and Launchpad has all of the different all of the different things. So for instance, if the teachers say that we're going to use Nearpod and Nearpod is in Launchpad, those type of different resources can be used. So your student can check out Launchpad now if they are already a current student just to see what options are in there. But um, yes, the parents, I'm sorry, the teachers will share that at open house um, when that is scheduled. So look for more information from Mr. Robinson concerning open house. Let me do one more and then um, we're going to turn it over to Wingfield and I'll be able to answer more of these questions in the chat. There are a few people that came in later that are asking about the documents. We will email out the documents along with the recording from this session. And also, um, since we're a little ahead of schedule, at the end when I go over review, I'm going to go ahead and set my computer up so you all can at least see what the documents look like, the four year course plan and and the um, frequently asked questions, so we'll do that. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Ms. Wingfield, and I am going to filter um, a few more of, of these questions. OK, so thank you guys. And again, thank you, Dr. Owens, and thank you, um, Ms. Crawford. If you all need to go tend to your families, we understand it. But I hear that the parents are giving some great feedback about how we can help our students be successful. So now we are MYP. Everyone needs to know that we are MYP and that stands for Middle Years Program. So I am turning it over to the well-known, wonderful Miss Wingfield. You got it, lady. Thank you so much, Ms. Johnson. Um, I appreciate that wonderful welcome. Good evening, parents. Thank you um, again. I know you've been thanks so much for giving us your time this evening. I do want to talk to you all about the uh, middle years program here at Westlake. Next slide. Um, many people are familiar with the IB program that we have had here at Westlake since 2016, um, but some people are not familiar with IB at all. So our next slide um, gives us the definition of the International Baccalaureate Program. So the International Baccalaureate is a nonprofit foundation um, whose motivation and mission is to create a better world through education. Their mission um, on the next slide is that they aim to develop inquiring, knowledgeable, and caring young people who will help to create a better and more peaceful world through intercultural understanding and respect. Our program encourages students across the world to become active, compassionate, and lifelong learners who understand that other people with their differences can also be right. So that is the foundation of the International Baccalaureate Program. Um, on the next slide, you'll see that there are actually four different programs that are offered in the IB. And so we currently at Westlake are diploma, a diploma program school. We have been authorized since 2016 offering these diploma program classes to 11th and 12th graders. We are currently in the process of becoming authorized as an MYP school, which is a middle years program. Um, and we are looking to become fully authorized this spring. But in the process of becoming authorized, with the MYP program, we have to incorporate all of the MYP principles in IB into our classes right now. So you'll see that the MYP program spans from sixth through the 10th grade. And at Westlake, it will be for our ninth and 10th grade students. So what does that mean for you all as parents? The MYP 
is a program that is specifically for sixth through 10th grade, but it is not like the diploma program. On the next slide, you will see that it is for all ninth and 10th grade students. So unlike the diploma program, which you may know or you may have some students, your students may be enrolled in the diploma program where it's specialized courses and there's an exam at the end of the two years. NYP is not specialized courses, but it's a specialized approach to learning um, that we will be incorporating in all of our classes. So it is for every single student. And it is because it emphasizes problem solving and creativity and hands on learning, student inquiry and international mindedness. So it's not a specific curriculum for our students, but it's a different approach that all of our students can benefit from. And this when I say all of our students, I mean in AP classes, honors classes, on level classes, all of our students can benefit from a hands on inquiry based instruction. So. IB, the MYP structure, consists of eight subjects. And at the high school level, we only have to incorporate MY and MYP um, structures into six of the subjects. So the six subjects that we have um, selected to focus on here at Westlake are going to be all of our core classes, our language and literature, language acquisition, which is another way for um, French and Spanish, Individuals and societies, which is also social studies, our sciences, our mathematics courses, and our physical and health education courses. So these courses are going to be the ones that we to make a special effort to incorporate MYP um, principles into their the structure of the classroom. Next slide. So you see the animation is showing which ones we're going to incorporate it into. All right, so what makes MYP special or meaningful for our students, right? Why did we select to do this for Westlake? Well, we truly believe that our students, all of our students have the opportunity to learn at the highest level possible. We want to create lifelong learners in our students, and the only way that we can create lifelong learning and a desire for them to continue to learn beyond what is required is to really make it fun, help to tap into their passions, get them to understand what learning in, a, in the 21st century is about, tying it to things that they care about, community service, create, uh, producing creative, critical and reflective thinkers. The, and we do truly believe that MYP is the vehicle by which we can do this. So research shows that MYP students um, are more confident in managing their own learning. We want our students to be independent. They learn more by doing. So it's not just about getting some information and regurgitating it on a, te on a test, but it's more about why does this information matter? How can this be applied in the real world? How can it be applied in the larger context of your other courses? Um, MYP students research shows that they outperform non-IB students in critical academic skills. It also shows that we can help to increase the students who are actually selecting and eligible for the diploma program through exposure to the MYP. Um, research also shows that inclusion of MYP helps to create a more positive school culture and it helps students to be engaged and intrinsically motivated to excel. So we know that in the context of the 21st century, we are truly creating students who are going to be competing on a global scale. And so bringing in the um, international mindedness for all of our students in the ninth and 10th grade will provide them a better foundation for competitiveness in our 21st century uh, professional world. Go to the next slide, please. All right, so more about why MYP. So it's not just to booster the um, International Baccalaureate Diploma Program, but MYP is going to help us to create a better foundation for whatever our students choose to do in 
their junior and senior years. It helps them to be better prepared for AP classes, for the IB diploma classes, for dual enrollment, for whatever career they may encounter because we know the careers these days are more focused on creativity and problem solving and ingenuity. And if we are able to give these skills to our students in the ninth and the 10th grade, and then to continue to perfect them as they matriculate through Westlake High School, we can create students that are better equipped for whatever they choose to pursue once they leave our doors. Next slide, please. So if you look at the IB learner profile, you look at these traits. There are 10 traits that are at the core of what we do in the IB program. And if you really sit and think about what a student who is an inquirer, who is reflective, who is open-minded and principled, these are traits that we want our students to possess and we want them to be good at them. The IB in everything that we do in MYP is going to help develop these skills in our students so that they can be better citizens of our community as they leave our building. So the MYP framework in which that we do this, next slide, You'll see at the center of the MYP framework is the IB learner profile. That means it is at the heart of the entire program. And it is surrounded by the other subject areas that our students are going to be exposed to, but the heart of everything they're going to be doing is to help develop those learner profile traits. There's also something called the approaches to learning, which is an explicit way to help students to learn how to learn. We know that in this environment, in education, there's so much emphasis on testing that we have lost the art of students just learning for the sake of learning. And this is something that is um, embedded in everything we do in the MYP. Key and related concepts is really helping the students to tie in concepts from all different subject areas so that they can see why what they're learning in language arts actually does apply to what they're learning in social studies. Why it's important that I learn how to read this graph in math because it's gonna help me learn how to read this table in my science class. And so it's more of an explicit way to tie all of the subjects together. And the global context really helps the students to give a meaning of why. Why does this matter? Why does this matter beyond the classroom? How can this help improve my life and the life of those around me? So all of this is a part of what is embedded in the MYP framework and that we believe would be the best thing for us to give to our Westlake students as a foundation for their education. All right, so next slide. Where are we in this process, guys? All right, so we are currently a candidate school and we will be a candidate school until we are fully authorized. So we are slated to um, submit our final application for authorization this late fall, early winter of 2020. So we are going to be incorporating these principles into our classrooms, even in the virtual environment, because we still want to give authenticity and meaning to what our students are learning, even in this um, alternate situation that we're in. We're going to put in this application and we're hoping we'll be able to schedule our visit for um, authorization in the spring of 2021. Once they come and visit the school and see that we are actually implementing exactly what we said we would in our application, then we would be considered a fully authorized school. All right, next slide. Mm -hmm. And then one more. So, do you want more information? First, on the school's website, and um, Ms. Johnson, if you could just click through, there is a page for information about the IB program. 
um, and you can learn about the diploma program as well as the middle years program. And you'll see as um, the presentation um, goes through, you see exactly where to go to get more information. So I've put up a lot of general information for parents to learn more about the middle years program, the um, principles associated with it and what you might see different in your child's classroom. Additionally, there is a page that the IB has that's specifically for parents. It's at ibo.org slash parents, and you can find information there. Or you can email me at wingfieldj at fultonschools.org, and I will be happy to speak with you and answer your questions about the MYP program. And like Ms. Johnson said, we our MYP, our entire school, all of our ninth and 10th graders are MYP, and we are excited for the opportunity to help them have more authentic and, and meaningful learning. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ms. Wingfield. Um, guys, you all have heard a lot tonight. Um, we allotted so much time um, because, you know, I wanted to make sure we could get all the information in, but the presenters are amazing and they were able to get it in in record time. So we are here till eight o'clock. I want to go ahead and ask that Ms. Wingfield and I see Ms. Crawford is there. If Ms. Hickman is on, um, whoever is on who can go in and just um, continue to filter some of these questions. Give me a second because what I want to do at this time, I want to share, I want to open on my computer and share the four year course progression and show you what that looks like because that is one of the documents that will be emailed out to you that I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. Also, um, I see there may be a few people who didn't come in at the beginning. I am getting a few of the, what are we gonna do about remote virtual? What are we gonna do about this? What are we gonna be, do about that? Can my student take that? And what we're doing, we're asking that you go to fultonschools.org with any remote, um, any remote learning questions because that will be your best, that'll be your best um, place for information as things are changing, continuing to change um, often. So we want to make sure you're getting what's most update. So any questions about remote learning returning to school on August the 17th, please make sure you're visiting fultonschools.org and right there on the front page, it tells you about remote learning and it even has a, a video from Dr. Looney that gives you um, a, a bit of an update, a bit of an update um, for, for that. So we're going to continue in answering questions. So give us um, a moment. Give me a moment and I'll pull up the four year course progression and let you see what that looks like. And again, it will be emailed out to you as well as on the website. We update it every year just to make sure we're always showing <clears throat> what's most um, relevant at the time. So I will pull that up and there it is. So just give me a second to unshare this and then to share. And while I'm doing this, if you don't mind, if you um, have feedback, I know it's a Q&A window that's open. So even if you don't have a question, if you just want to give some feedback, feel free. Feel free to do that as well. All right, I'm about to share. OK, so what you see here is let me try to just make it a little bigger to make sure you can see it. OK, so this is Westlake's four year course progression. Um, and what I try to do is make sure we change the colors each year just to um, make sure any if we make any changes to it or updates, the colors will change. But it is your go to. This is your this is your map and your guide for Westlake High School. It tells when your student is actually I'm going to zoom in so we can just look at um, each year. So on your ninth grade level, that is the level that's in green. It is broken down by what's on level, what's advanced, and what's magnet. So this is the average student's progression. Of course, what's happening is we have a lot of advanced students that have come in, have a student this year that's coming in as a ninth grader in pre-calculus. So of course, if you know that your student has taken some virtual classes, you come from a state where they did different um, block scheduling differently and your student has more credits, what you are to do, you're to find where your student is on this course progression. So for example, that student who has come in as a ninth grader and in math 
This is what that student would normally be taking. That student would be here with geometry and accelerated algebra. Your student wouldn't be there if they've already taken those classes. You then need to go jump down and see what level they are on. This student would be on the pre-cal level accelerated. So if your student is that outlier that has taken those, those different courses and they are above a ninth grade level, you can still use this chart to see where your student falls in the certain subject areas. But on average, we have our ninth graders, you're either coming in on level and you're going to take ninth lit, Algebra 1, Environmental Science. You're going to do Health and American Government. You're going to take your World Language, and then you're going to take your first Pathway class. Um, also, you'll notice if you've seen the schedule, you've seen something called College Readiness Math that is paired with Algebra 1, so it's not something that you can drop. So if you were one parent who's gone in and said, hey, I want to remove that College Readiness Math, that is the, the course that, um, that pretty much coincides with Algebra 1. So on a day they'll see Miss Johnson, who's their Algebra 1 teacher. On B day they go right back to Miss Johnson, who will then have um, some different enrichment assignments. They're able to then um, ask deeper questions and reteach those things that they, maybe they didn't get on Monday. So it's giving your student the opportunity to reinforce those Algebra 1 concepts. So that is what you see with College Readiness Math. College Readiness Math is a math course. So when our students become seniors and they may need a fourth year math, um, college readiness can be used for that. You just then have to make sure your college is OK with that being used as a four year math. So that is something that you personally would have to check out with the college of choice. If not, it serves as an elective. Writer's Workshop. Again, you see Writer's Workshop. It is paired with Ninth Lit. Same concept. It is to reinforce our math and our reading skills for our ninth grade students. So that's your own level. Students that come in a little bit more advanced may be ninth lit honors. You see world lit honors here because we have a lot of middle schools who are doing the thing and they are offering middle, excuse me, high school classes on the middle school level. So because of that, there are students that are coming in with five credits already because they've taken so much at the middle school. So again, find out where your student falls in this in this um, table and this is how you can say what does my student take next so once you find out hey my students advanced we took ninth lit um, in the middle school so we're going to take world lit this year um, we took algebra so we're taking geometry and then we're taking biology honors now health and american government those are your required electives of course health is not i need to fix that health is not a social studies it is um, a pe class but it is the required pe class and we usually pair them with American government. So some people have said, hey, my student wants to be in band, but they also want to be an in intro to healthcare science. How can they take both? And you have all these double block classes. What a lot of parents do, they take health and American government during the summer and you tell your counselor, hey, we're going to take health and American government during the summer or we're going to take it the senior year when if you scroll down, you start seeing things like open elective. You start seeing like open, dual enrollment, open, open. So when we say you have opportunities for those students who come in, do what they need to do, they're passing all of their classes, your student by their 10th, 11th, and 12th grade year, you start seeing these things called open, um, where everybody now have open here, open here, open here, open, and you see all these opportunities. Your students who come in, do what they need to do, don't fail classes, these students should be able to graduate we have some that graduate with associate degrees. You can go do work-based learning and do um, internships. You can do full-time dual enrollment and get all of these college credits. So there are those opportunities. We just need to make sure your student stays on track and those type things open up. So if you want to say, hey, I want to take health and American government in another year, you can talk over that with your counselor. Now, that's only available for health and American government because they are um, not you know, your core class, you can't say I want to take ninth lit later. Um, everything else is a core class that has to build on the previous one. So it's not for those courses. Only health and American government are those semester electives that parents often opt to take at a different year because they're trying to make room in the schedule. So that is that is a way for those people who are just trying to do um, your band and things of that nature. So we do have those conversations, but that is not a lot. Um, maybe about five people do it a year, but I did want to mention that. So that's your ninth graders and 10th graders. If you see ninth grade and 10th grade, take your world language. I had a question that asked, um, is it required for, are we all MYP? Yes, we are MYP. 
um, and we are MYP now. Um, what we're doing, we're not accredited like Miss Wingfield told you, but in order to get that accreditation, we have to be fully functional. So every year we roll out another part. So last year we rolled out ninth graders taking their foreign language and they take their second foreign language this year. Um, this year we're rolling out a mandatory PE, a physical education class for 10th graders. So you will see that if you teach, a not teach, I'm sorry, if you have a 10th grade student, you will see a general PE or some sort of physical education class on their schedule. That is is not something that we can drop because it is required for us to meet those MYP standards that she explained in in her um, presentation. And then, of course, you can move on to, of course, your 11th grade and your 12th grade year. So these are our courses. Um, I love this one pager because it should answer all of your questions about what we offer at Westlake High School. Hey, I want my student to take chemistry and I want my student to take that. A lot of times we can say, hey, we don't offer um, that class, but these are the sciences that we do offer. So this is a great tool that helps you map out. Even when I meet with parents one on one, um, I have. I have something right in front of me now from a student I met with and a parent at the end of um, January where we mapped out their four year plan. And this is what can be used to advise our students um, as we're mapping out things. And it's something I can give to you to take home and say, hey, work with your family and, and look at how your four year plans, put it on your refrigerator and then check off your classes. And it helps your students see that, hey, you've met this requirement. Hey, let's look at our ninth grade year. You check, 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 you made it. Now 10th grade, this is what we're working on. So this is something that will be be great for you to print off and even have as a goal setting tool with your student at home. All right, so have some more questions coming up. I'm going to show you what the frequently asked question form looks like and then we'll spend the rest of the time up until eight o'clock for those who want to leave, who want to stay. I'll um, go through some of these questions that I see. We have about 23 new ones that have come in, so I will address some of those over the next over the next few minutes. So let me add this one last document. There it is. OK, this is our frequently asked questions about student services. Um, this is the document that Miss Crawford went over. And as you can see, it pretty much looks just like what you saw on her PowerPoint slide. So it is the frequently asked questions. We came together three or four years ago as a team and said, OK, what are those things that we constantly get asked? Um, because we want to do our best to improve customer service on a regular basis. So when we keep getting the same question, we said, OK, we need to do a better job in making sure we articulate that to our families. So these are the things over the years um, and we update it every year. Uh, somebody asked, said, hey, I tried to and one of the questions someone has already gone on to the Fulton, I'm sorry, Westlake website to try to email the counselors. Those Calendly links are not available yet. This is something that literally the counselors made yesterday and it will become, it will come available. Um, the webmaster has them. So as soon as she gets them up, hopefully by Friday, you will be able to do that. But I will also let you know that next week counselors are doing nothing but schedule changes from the link. And I want to say that again, that link that was sent out, the link that is on your schedule, the link that Mr. Robinson has sent out, I want to say about two or three times now, they will be focused on addressing the schedule changes that were put into the link. I will give them those links and they will work from there. So they won't be responding to phone calls. Um, I have them on it. And when they can't reply, it's not because they're ignoring you. I have them on a, hey, leave your office. We're going over here to the conference room. Let's work on these schedule changes because those are the priorities for next week. So if you have a schedule change and you emailed the counselor and you're like, hey, they haven't gotten back to me, make sure that is in the form. Make sure you have put that schedule change request in the form um, because that is what they will be working off of next week. And um, then if you have sent an email or something of that nature, they will be able to address those. But next week we'll be focused completely on counselors being away from their offices and working on completing those schedule changes. You will be able to see those schedule changes. Um, it is supposed to open an infinite campus on August the 10th. That is the last date that I received that August the 10th is the date that the portal is open. Excuse me, the portal will be open that everyone can see 
can see their student schedule in Infinite Campus. Right now, you cannot see it. Also, Ms. Holland, the registrar, um, her and Ms. Bates, not Ms. Bates, I'm sorry, her and Ms. Burke, forgive me. Her and Ms. Burke will send out an email either tomorrow morning, tomorrow evening, asking for parents who are not on the portal. It will give you the steps for requesting access to the portal because there are uh, quite a few parents who still um, don't know how to navigate the portal and don't um, have access to that. So that will happen tomorrow as well. So everyone should be fine for August 10th to see the updates of the schedule. And again, like Ms. Crawford said, we put um, some of the requests cannot be made. Some people will say, hey, my student's first choice for a pathway was healthcare, but your student is also taking um, they're taking the only advanced bands class. They're taking the only um, AP something class. You know, so a lot of times when there are only one class being offered and your student needs that as a requirement, your elective, your first choice may not be able to fit. So that's why when we register students, we ask them for three choices. And a lot of times your student is getting the third choice um, that they ask for because schedules have to fit. So that is why we wanted to define the difference between a course request and an actual schedule because on the course request, you saw exactly what your student asked for. And that is what we put in the system. When I go in and I have to build the master schedule. And when we say build the master schedule, I take all six or 700 classes that are offered at Westlake High School and I put them on the wall and say, OK, this one can go first period. This one goes second. This goes third. And it all has to fit like a huge puzzle. So that is what my job is. Once that's done and if anybody want to see those pictures, they're beautiful. It's, it's probably like six, 700 magnets on my wall at home because we had to do it virtually. But once I get all that into the computer and press build, it then spits out that, hey, Cecilia wanted um, advanced physical condition and she can't take it because it is blocking with her AP biology. And if we change her AP biology, it is now blocking with her, her um, AP world lit. So you have those different conflicts once we build the schedule. So now what you saw on the course request didn't match what's on the schedule because when your student had African history, we now had to drop that to make something else fit. So that is how master scheduling is done. That's the navigating. So it's not that we just completely change what your student requested on the course request. Once it gets together, it may not fit. Believe me, counselors aren't just <laughs> spending time saying, oh, nope, going to drop that. The computer does it. It's pretty much a computer generated moment that it will fit the core classes first, and then it begins to put the electives and things around it based off priority. And a lot of times it just does not fit. So I just wanted to share that. That is what happens with the scheduling. All right, so you guys will get this document, this document as well. Um, this is what Ms. Crawford read from, and it is the frequently asked questions that you'll be able to print off and keep at home. So those are that, and you will also get this presentation, presentation from tonight. So at this time, we're going to go in and look at a few more of these questions. I want to go ahead and release people who don't want to hang around for the questions that are in. Um, and I want to say thank you for being with us tonight. I thank you for all of your wonderful feedback. And we always take all of the questions and reflect on them to see what we can do better. Um, so it's always about presenting our best self. So thank you for the feedback, whether it's whether it's some um, <clears throat> some critical things that we need to fix or it's just a great job. We take them all and we review them all. And we thank you for all of your feedback. All of the people who checked on us over the over the virtual, not virtual, over the COVID and the pandemic. We appreciate that. Thank you for your patience as we are learning, not just um, adjusting to what's going on in the world and all of the changes. We in student services, that's me, that's the registrar, that's your counselors. We're also adjusting to a new software that we weren't working in at this time last year. So um, we thank you for your patience and your understanding when we have to say, oh, the data is going to be this. Well, let's change it and things of that nature. So thank you so much for your support, your patience with us and all of your wonderful feedback that you give. So for those who need to leave, um, um, it's a little, a little close to dinner time. So if you have um, a little food on the stove or something like that, you are free to leave if you need to. So I did want to go ahead and say good night and thank you for being with us. So I'm going to just switch my attention to some of the, the questions. So I'm going to go with the ones that have been published first. And a few of them have always already been offered. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Jinx, AP Chemistry. No, but we do offer the Chemistry Honors and IB. Thank you, Ms. Crawford. Uh, again, if you haven't received your schedule, you are emailing Johnson C5 at Fulton Schools. Email Johnson C5. Um, what we're going to do when 
any of these questions that are about, I haven't received my schedule, let me go ahead and address that. You are to email me, but when you email me, I need to know your student's name. I need to know your student's date of birth as well as your mailing address because what we're finding some of them are just accurate and the label is accurate i'm going to send you the label and i'm going to send you the schedule that was sent and those things are going to match if they match what you send me i'll go ahead and email those out and what that means is your schedule is probably somewhere at the post office um, your schedule is somewhere floating out there ready to be delivered hasn't been delivered yet because i am showing you a snippet of the actual label that was sent as well as the schedule that was sent that has the same address on it so what we're finding everything is accurate there are no schedules left at westlake high school so they're somewhere out there at the post office we dropped them off at the post office we didn't even have anyone come pick them up we put them in the car drove them to the post office and dropped them off ourselves so um, other things that we're finding you have moved and didn't update the address or your child guardian used to be the grandmother and now they're back with you and that wasn't updated so those type things are what we are are filtering through so any schedule issues where you have not received them go ahead and email johnson c5 at fultonschools.org and give me again your student's name date of birth and the current mailing address so i'm going to check the ones that i that have been addressed so i can stay on it how do you make changes to infinite campus to add family members my um holland m h o i'll type it in h o l l a n d m at fulton schools Dot org. She's our registrar and she is the one that will tell you what you need to do to make changes to Infinite Campus, um, add family members and things like that. How can I know that a class on my scholar schedule counts towards college admission? Um, I believe Miss did Miss Crawford answered that. OK, all of our all of our classes that are offered are hope rigor. We make sure that all of our core classes are hope rigor. Um, so everything that we offer automatically meets the requirement, the rigor requirement that HOPE presents. Now, every now and again, you may have when it comes to NCAA, it may be an elective where the NCAA for the athletes may say, hey, you didn't upload what that new psychology class means or or that new tech in society It's always maybe like an elective. And we then have to go in and give them the state course requirements. But all of our classes are aligned with the state and they are aligned with um, what we need for hope. Now, there are times when the advanced math decision making, there are people who question whether or not the college accepts that. What we always stress for your student to do, call the admissions office and ask and say, hey, I'm taking advanced math decision making. Um, is that something that meets your requirement? The average school is going to tell you yes, because we haven't had many schools that say, hey, um, I don't even recall any that has said they haven't accepted any of the classes that we offer at Westlake. Now, another thing is the requirement for world language. The requirement for world language at Westlake is three years of world language. That is a Westlake requirement for um, that helps towards us being college and career ready as far as meeting Fulton County's um, strategic plan goal. So let me explain that. Fulton County has set a goal for 90% of all of our students in the county to be college and career ready. It also counts toward our CCRPI. So we have set a standard that all of our students take three years of, of world language. So that is something that is expected of every student at Westlake, and it also makes them a pathway completer in world language. So for those who take three years of band or three years of healthcare, you get to be a pathway completer there. You also automatically are a pathway completer in world language when you take the three years. So that is something that we that we push here at Westlake High School. Also, college colleges are looking for a minimum of two years of world language for access. So then somebody will always say, I have parents say, well, my student is going to the military. They're not considering college. We make sure that every student who leaves here can have the opportunity to go to college if they change their mind. If you remember the Fox report from this summer, we had 100% of our seniors um, accepted. We did a push for them all to apply to college. We did that push back in the fall and you got that. Um, I think we had 400. It said 500 students close to 500, but we had 461 graduates. So those students were 
eligible and accepted to some sort of college. So we that is our goal to make sure each student is college ready, whether they've made that decision to go technical school, go to the military. If you change your mind, because we have had it happen where someone then comes back two years later and say, uh, I thought I wanted to, but now I want to go to college. We want to say you're ready to go because we gave you um, the world languages. So please know that we are making sure all of our students are ready. How does the face to face September 18th September 8th work. Again, that is a remote learning question, so please go to FultonSchools.org for that. That's been answered. Yes, I've answered that one. Didn't receive the schedule. Answered that one. Thank you. Um, students handing in their summer work. Um, that has been answered, but I want to make sure everybody saw it. If the summer work is a, an IB or a magnet, um, you've heard from our magnet office on what to do with that. Those are required. Those are required summer assignments. So those will be asked for. I promise you the teacher will ask for them within the first week of school. All of the other classes that were optional, that was just, of course, to strengthen your student and things like that. There are some teachers who may say, OK, you did the you did the U.S. history summer work and they may offer some kind of enrichment for that. So if you haven't heard anything within the first week from your honors AP and IB teacher. Um, that's definitely something that they will do. We've done that for years. This is our first year offering those enrichments for our non IB and non honors and magnet courses. So you may um, not hear from that teacher because those were posted just for your student to be enriched and to cover some of those foundational skills that they did not get or they missed last semester because of everything we had to do with remote learning. So that is something you can ask the teacher during open house. Fill out registration. No, they don't. They roll over automatically. All right, I think I need to go to the bottom. How can a student advance? For example, if a ninth grader is taking algebra one, but they want to graduate and take AP stats or AP Cal. So um, the thing about math tracks, the math tracks about, I want to say between eight and 10 years ago, um, the math standards change and they've changed a few times since then. But the thing about the math honors track is it starts in, excuse me, <clears throat> it starts in middle school. So for example, the students who are in, you can go back to the Westlake course progression. Those students who are on this ninth grade advanced track for math, you see that they are taking geometry honors. They took algebra one honors in ninth grade. There is no way to get on the honor track um, after ninth grade. Um, because the thing about the honors track, I'm sorry, after eighth grade coming into ninth grade, because the honors track is an entire semester ahead. So for instance, if your student came and they did great and they were recommended for accelerated algebra honors, that student is taking all of algebra and a semester of geometry in one school year. So you can't just jump from algebra to accelerate it because you are, um, you're going to be behind a semester of something. So the track for for advance has to start in the middle school and going into your ninth grade, where if you did advanced eight algebra, I'm sorry, if you did advanced math eight in middle school and your teacher recommended you for an advanced class because you've made over an 85, you are then on the accelerated track. So just take time to look at the math track. Algebra one goes to geometry, then goes to algebra two, and then by your 12th grade year, you can then take take pre -cal. So I think the question was, how can a student advance um, taking algebra one? They want to graduate taking AP stats or AP Cal. Talk to your counselor about that because normally that involves taking something and having pay to pay for a class over the summer um, and to get it get advanced in math. So that is what you have to do if you don't come in on the advanced math track. And math is the only one that, that offers like, operates like that. So don't everybody get into a panic. It is only the math pathway in the state of Georgia that operates in that way where you cannot jump from regular to honors. Now you can fall down. Let's say you were in geometry honors and you didn't cut it and need to go down to regular geometry. You can, but there isn't a jumping up in the math tracks. So when your counselor says, no, you can't take the advanced class, it's not just something where saying here it is based off of the track that the math 
um, in the state of Georgia have a lot. So to get ahead and to advance in math, um, you must do something over the summer or work out something with your counselor. So that is a direct meeting with your counselor to see what options you have and what kind of room is in your schedule um, for advancement in that math area if they start by taking Algebra 1. I see AP Human Geo for my ninth grader. Is that an appropriate course? So that is a cohort. Look for something from Mr. Robinson. There were 20 students that were selected based off of their grade. We went through every ninth grader who was filtered, uh, not filtered, who were um, scheduled um, to come to Westlake from, from all of our feeder schools. And we took a, about a week to go through all of their transcripts. And we were looking for something very specific. And I'll let Mr. Robinson kind of tell you that student because we want to expose um, the average student to a couple of AP classes, but still have honors class here. So we picked a different combination of where you had to have been doing well in this class, but not so well in this class, but okay in this class. So there was there was a formula that we used, and we found 24 kids who met those requirements um, out of the out of the um, AP. I'm sorry, out of the ninth grade cohort that was coming. So this is a cohort of students that we are looking at to provide AP Human Geo to them to see how they do. And Mr. Robinson is going to meet with those parents individually very soon. He has that list as of last week. He was scheduling that meeting. So um, that is a cohort that um, that um, will be that will be offered for that student. So if you see that, just know that it, that is a cohort that Mr. Robinson will share more about. Um, Miss schedule. I'm sorry. Thank you, Crawford. It's Holland M1. So I forgot the one. Uh, and I'm seeing questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I answered the one about honors AP classes being offered at this remote decision. Yes, your students will be taking following their class schedule as normal in this remote learning. They will take their classes from their um, specific teachers here at Westlake. Creating more than one infant campus profile, you should email Holland M1 to answer that. She's our registrar. Her email address has just been put in the Q&A. It's Holland M1. Has the engineer and technology pathway been combined? If so, can former technology pathway students take courses through Fulton Virtual? I think I replied to that. No, the engineer and technology courses have not been combined. We no longer offer the programming the programming course. We do have technology courses. Engineering and technology is the name of the engineering pathway. So I don't want um, you to be confused about that. That is the actual name of the engineering pathway that starts with engineer intro to engineering. I'm sorry. Foundations of engineering, concepts of engineering, and the engineering app. So that is that pathway. So no, there has not been any combination there. That is the name of the pathway. If your student has taken a They've taken the technology pathway in the past. We have spent um, last year kind of filtering out those students who had the programming pathway. They went on virtual last year and knocked out those pathways. And we only have three students left who are needing to complete that pathway because they only need um, that last class. So those three students have been given that. So anyone else outside of that, those three students, you'll probably need to email me because I need to look at your student schedule to see what exactly your student is needing because we've checked and there were no more technology pathway, programming pathway students who um, hadn't already matriculated through. And I believe didn't receive the schedule. Yes, um, the team meeting will be sent out can band students choose a pathway and still attend band classes? Um, I addressed that a little bit. It is rare. It is rare that a student can Band is a pathway. So let me discuss um, when Ms. Crawford went over, um, when Ms. Crawford went over the different things that are offered, you saw that music was a pathway. So just like all pathways, it has to be chosen. And I want to say that again, your student, I'm a band, I'm a band geek. That was me. I did band since I was in third grade. Love band. Even Mr. Young, who is our current band director, he was my band director. So I love band. I love the arts. So I know I'm that student that took it in third grade all the way up to eighth grade. So if you're that student and you realize I want to keep doing band as my pathway, it has to be chosen just like healthcare had to be chosen and engineering had to be chosen. So it is a pathway that has to be chosen. So you can't say I want to do band and I want to do engineering because as you see on this schedule, there's no room. So look at this, you have ninth lit, you have algebra one, environmental science, your health and American government, Spanish, and look, one class. 
one class and that is for their pathway, which if you want it to be banned, that has to be banned. It has to be either or because your student schedule is full. Now, students who are on an advanced class, um, advanced level, they have an open elective. Um, so there is a little more flexibility there. So that is why I suggested there are a few people who want to do both. They're adamant about, hey, my child's going to be a doctor and we love the band. We're going to go on a band scholarship. We will pay to take health and American government over the summer because we want to go ahead and get them done. Or you wait and what we have you do, we have you pretty much write an email that you are wanting to change health and American government and take it again. Moving health and American government, please know that health is where you get your driver's license ADAP card. So if you say, hey, my student can take it in 11th or 12th grade, we want to we want to move it and let them take it later. That's fine. You can let your counselor know that. Um, but please know your child won't have their ADEP card. So these are the type things that you have to think through when you're deciding when you want two pathways and things of, of, of that. Um, I keep saying things of that nature, but things like that. So if you want to do that, that does mean that your health American government or one of those can be taken during the summer. But since it is not something that was failed and is for acceleration, it is a fee to taking that class. Do we still need to complete summer assignments? Yes, you still need to complete that, especially the ones that are required, which are our honors, our AB and IP students. Those are required. The others were optional and encouraged um, because they have foundational skills. So let's say you said, oh, US history is optional. My student chose not to do it. There may be something at the beginning where the teacher is moving quickly through those foundational skills. So I would want my student to be abreast of what the teacher is, is going over because a lot of those were the skills that may be um, had to be moved quickly through in the prerequisite course because of what was going on with COVID. So they're coming from world history. That teacher may come and quickly go over some of those foundational skills that you need to know, which were probably found in that summer assignment. So it is encouraged that you do all of the summer assignments, um, at least peruse them and go over some of the things for those that were not required. Um, all right, talked about are students allowed to record class sessions? I'm sure you heard that and that is a, a no um, because so much we have amazing students at Westlake, but as far as the county and as, pro, as far as those few outliers who may not have good intentions, re allowing access to record class sessions, we never know what may end up on on social media and things of things like that. So the county has decided there are no recording of class sessions. So teachers do have the capability to record sessions and provide notes um, and things like that as at their discretion. So we are asking and requiring pretty much that students are not allowed to require uh, allowed to record any sessions. The Google program that was mentioned is rescue time. That's rescue time from rescue time and it seems to be one of those um, extensions that Google has. So Miss Dawn, that was that question for you, sweetheart. Great job, counselors. Forgive me. I responded to that. What happens if the student is not successful in MYP? What help will be given to the student? MYP is not a necessary course. It is um, the structure that we are using to teach our classes. So it's embedded. So it's not as if a student is saying, I mean, a student is taking an MYP class. Westlake 9th and 10th is middle years program. So every student who's taking a world language, you're taking a PE and all of our teachers are using the MYP lesson plan. So it is embedded. So it's not one of those things where your student can't be successful, won't be successful in MYP. It is the culture of Westlake High School. We are MYP and I think that's why I chose to say it that way. We are MYP. So the lesson plans that the teachers are using, those are MYP lesson plans and those skill sets that Ms. Wingfield talked about, um, how you're, you're creative and the different mindset being a, um, in, and having inquiry as one of your characteristics, those are embedded in what your math teacher, your history teacher, your science teacher will be teaching. So it is not an MYP class. So I'm glad she went over that because we wanted to make sure everyone understood this is our changing the way that our students think and them having a global perspective is our goal. And we are MYP. It's not a class that they take. Thank you. Thank you. When is the next testing deadline for the IB program? Um, we're going to ask Ms. Wingfield that because it's done. Um, it is done for the year, so I know she will um, have to share that with you if she's still online. I think she's gone. Yeah, she's logged off, but um, the testing deadline for IB will come up in the 
in the fall getting ready for the IB testing um, for spring. So she will share that. What can students do as ninth and 10th graders to prepare for acceptance into the um, diploma program? Diploma program have to be, you have to be, um, if you scroll down once you get this form, diploma, come on, Ms. Johnson, click. All right, it's not moving. There we go. Diploma program, um, if you see they start to move into their IB history and things in the 11th grade, you have to um, follow and you did say diploma. Diploma means they're taking all of the necessary IB classes. So you can be certificate and not be um, in the magnet program because right now those students in the magnet program, um, you've passed your accelerated classes. You've taken both chemistry and um, advanced uh, AP chemistry or chemistry honors and an AP physics. There are certain requirements that have to get you ready to take the IB history as prerequisites and, and the IB physics or the IB chemistry and the IB literature. So full and the IBT. OK, so please look at this level, your 11th grade magnet schedule and what you can do when you get this paper. You can then go back and start saying, OK, what do I have to do outside of school for my students? Not a magnet student, but they've taken they've taken biology honors. They've taken AP physics. They've taken this. But what is missing for my student to be ready to take an IB course for diploma, that means you want to take the full gamut of the IB courses. You have to talk to Ms. Wingfield because you're going to have to do a lot outside of school for that. Now to be certificate, you only have to take two of the um, level courses. So then you may be able to say, OK, my student is right in line for taking advanced chemistry because we've taken the physics, we've taken the AP biology, we're good. I want to take chemistry um, SL year one. There's an application that then Ms. Wingfield shares in the fall um, and she'll share that this fall where you can then say my student is set to take this class. They want to take IB business management. They want to take IB dance, IB art. They want to take IB chemistry, IB history. Um, so there are those courses that you can take for the certificate and then you're only required to take two. So you don't have to um, have as many requirements as the actual full diploma program. All right, and I see people are leaving. It's still, I got 48 hanging around with me, so I want to make sure I've put checks on the ones I have answered. How soon can we set appointments with counselors to map out a plan? Um, again, this is the plan already mapped out for you, so I will suggest that you start here um, mapping this out. I need to know what grade you are in to map out a plan because technically ninth and 10th grade is mapped out for you, mapped out for you already, and that is why we do junior advisement um, and at the 11th grade level to get you ready for all of these open areas because that's where you can really start to make make those decisions and choices like that. But ninth and 10th grade is already mapped out and that is why this is a very important document. Now making alterations and hey, my student is taking this class virtually and we paid for it. They took this class here and they went to this program and here are the credits. Now those are the things that we want to begin sitting with the counselor. Counselors will start sitting down having those type meetings that you're talking about, Mr. Terman, they start having those during the second week of school. So that will be towards the end of August that they actually are sitting down, not sitting, but having virtual meetings with the with the counselor because right now it is all about schedule changes. It's all about making sure students are properly placed so that we can get Excuse me, school started. So if there's anything that is pressing now that you need to map out a plan about, you may email them. Or I suggest you email me if it's just, hey, my student um, needs to know the requirements for taking this. I will filter most of those questions out for them because I need them to finish schedule changes. So you can email me, Mr. Terman, if you have any of those questions. I'm about two days behind on my emails because I've been preparing for tonight. So forgive me if anyone has emailed me with any questions. And I'm going to answer a few more and then we're going to log off about I'm here to 8.30, so I don't mind. Y'all can hang with me, those who want to. My daughter has one credit for Latin. How does that work coming in as a ninth grade? Email me directly, Miss Champion. Um, we do not offer we do not offer Latin, but there are some things that we can do virtually for the students who already come in with credits. Now, I have people all the time that say, hey, my student is interested in Chinese. You all don't offer Chinese. Um, we have to pay for any class that students are taking because that is a Georgia virtual class. So unless the student is in your predicament where they're coming in with credit already and just need one year 
to finish their requirements or need one or two years, those type things we can talk about at, on a one off basis because your student is coming in with Latin credit and would like to fulfill that pathway. Talk to e you can email me directly for that. Those are those one offs where we are then able to offer. We're able to offer um, a different um, situation for you. All right. Hello, Mr. Jinx. If there is a scheduling conflict, can the student take the desired class virtually? That's the one off as well. Email me, tell me, Otis, what that conflict is, and we can work on that because a lot of times, whatever that conflict is, we just need to know. That's just one of those things we need to know because a lot of time people are asking for things that we offer face to face in the school. So I don't want to say yes, because we're going to send you to that face to face class that's in the school. But if it's one of those things where like it's that band conflict where you want to take two pathways and you as a family agree that you're going to do some things virtually and it may be paid for it, maybe taken outside of the day. Those are the things we just need to know one offs and give you advice for that. Again, I will filter out those type questions since the counselors will be all they will be um, out of contact. They will, you probably still see their out of office reply because next week they are completely, actually for the next couple of weeks, because after school starts, you then have um, the first 10 days for them to make additional schedule changes. So we want to make sure they are placing your student where they need to be so that link is the first um, first level that you want to do. Make sure you're putting your your questions in the link, not questions, but your requests in those links because they will be working off of those first. Anything outside of meeting those requirements of a schedule change, please email Johnson C5 and I will do my best to to answer those questions. I do say again, I am two days behind on on my emails and I have about 35 that I want to work on tonight after I get home and get me some dinner. So please give me a moment. But if there's something Otis that is specific, you know, I'll take care of it. So email email me and I'll look into whatever that conflict is and see what we can do. Thank you, Dr. Henry. Very informative. I registered my student last week. When should I expect a schedule? Um, students who have been registered within the summer period, um, there is a process where we have to have a rollover and that means we are currently, when you open Infinite Campus, when you open the parent portal, it still says 1920 because it is back in um, last school year. The county does what we call a rollover where we can now see updated 2021 information. So the counselors received today a list of every student who has registered while the counselors were out and now that they're back on their 20. 21 contract year. So they got that list there to be able to build build those schedules for the students. So just like people who are getting schedule changes, all schedule changes, any updates, any new schedules, you can expect to see those schedules in the portal on August the 12th. That is the date where any changes or any updates that have been made will be accessible in the parent portal that you can see them on, on um, August the 10th. I think I said 12th, forgive me, but August the 10th. My daughter had, we talked about the Latin one. If a student earns a foreign language credit in middle school, does it count as a third credit earned in high school? No, it counts as a first credit. So a student to receive that middle school credit in foreign language, and again, good night to those who are leaving. Um, again, we appreciate you, but those who are listening to these questions, you can, you're welcome to stay around for the next 19 minutes. If a student earned a foreign language credit in middle school, you have to take two years of foreign language in middle school to count as one credit of high school credit. So those students who took seventh grade and eighth grade middle school world language, um, there was opportunity for you to, um, at middle school, for that to be put on your transcript as Spanish or French or whatever foreign language you took, you should see that credit on your child's transcript and we see it as well. So your student is then put placed in the level two. So now you just need to take level two and level three. So that means ninth grade, you'll take level two, 10th grade, you'll take level three. You have met the requirement for your world language and your student is done. So yes, it will count towards the first credit in that cycle. Should I have received my daughter's schedule if she's just completed registration? No. If you're transferring from a new district, if your student registered over the summer, your student schedule will be able to be seen in the portal on on August the 9th. Now we are excited about that because a lot of times when you register over the summer, you're not able to see it until open house, which is a few days before school starts. But you should be able to see it um, after August 10th in the portal because we have to do records requests. We want to make sure that the counselors got whatever you brought in, whatever transcript that is, and we want to get the official documentation from the previous school so that we can make sure we're uh, 
properly placing your student and putting your student in the classes that they passed. So again, August 10th is that date. My daughter is a half credit shot. Oh, being a junior, how can she enroll in credit recovery? Um, there are some credit recovery things going on if they didn't handle it in summer school, which of course is the first line of, of, of focus that we would have sent you to is doing it in summer school, but your counselor should and will put that on the schedule. If it's something you wanna make sure is handled now, um, go ahead and put that in the form. Go ahead and put that in the form for a schedule change request and say, I believe there's a button where it says other when it asks for, no, there's a button that says student needs credit for graduation. And you check that button and then you can let the child, um, you can look at the schedule and say, hey, my child is put in current issues or put in psychology. We want to go ahead and knock out this half credit. So drop psychology or drop whatever that elective is and add whatever that half credit that a student is shot of. So you can do that through the, the request and what the counselor will do, that counselor will look at that student. And if they have not done it already, they will make sure that student, if it fits, that student is placed into that credit recovery. That's a good question. Is Spanish 2 considered an honors course? No, it is not. Spanish 2 honors is considered an honors course. So there are your honors elective. Again, if you look at this course progression, you see that it says Spanish or French and then there's Spanish honors or French honors. So um, that is something that has to be recommended. All courses, honors courses, AP courses, things like that had to be teacher recommended and the student had to have at least an 85. So when you look at the link, you will see that there is something called a course waiver. And on that course waiver, we, we make it very clear. Students, not students, I'm sorry, um, teachers make the recommendation based on the student's performance in class. We let them do it because they know your student best. They know your student strength and things like that. They make the recommendation. So if it is not on your schedule and you still want your student to be in that honors course, you still fill out the schedule change form, that link, and what you are to put, you have to fill out that waiver and read it. Make sure you read it because one of the first questions is, did you read the waiver? Because what happens is a lot of times I've had this happen where we say, oh, my student does great. Um, in, in social studies, so let's go into AP history, but the teacher, AP US history, but your world history teacher did not recommend you for it. So what the waiver says is, I understand that my child has not been recommended for honors, but we want to go for it anyway. And what that means is when you're in that honors class, you are in it for the year. You are in that class for the year. So make sure you consider those type um, clauses that are in that waiver when you read it, because we want to make sure your student is um, in the class that's appropriate based off of their current performance in those classes. So we look at the transcript, we talk to the teachers they recommend, or sometimes sometimes you have that student that's great that made a 78 and the teacher says, I know this student's caliber. They may not have the 85 that the counter requires, but I'm going to recommend them, that's fine. But if the teacher didn't recommend and that student does not have an 85, you have to sign that waiver, um, respond to that waiver on the form for us to put that student in that class. All right, I said that one. Photos of the schedules on the wall <laughs> at home. <laughs> Mr. Terman, I will make sure you get those pictures. Um, look, I may have them. I may have them on my computer now. I see Mr. Robinson has um, come in and he's he's in as well. I know he wants to say something. I'll let him uh, say hi to you all. But um, what Mr. Terman is asking about, I talked about how the schedule, how the schedule looks when it is um, done on the wall. And I think I do have it in my pictures. So let me stop sharing and I will show you um, that while I'm <laughs> answering some more of some more of the questions. Um, if a student was initially enrolled in virtual, are they now to participate? Are they now able to participate in sports activity? Yes, they can participate in the sports activity because we all are we all are remote right now. So just like the question that someone asked earlier, they saw some classes were dropped. All of the full-time virtual classes, for those who opted for full-time virtual, those classes have been dropped off of your schedule. And, and what has happened once those classes are dropped off of your schedule, it puts your student right back in in every class. So you're just like a Westlake student coming to school as you normally would, but you're going to be doing it virtually. So yes, you are able to, to participate in those sports and those who are in fall sports have already been been doing those things. When students take AP physics in 10th grade for one semester, they take the AP exam at the end of the year. Please wait on information 
forum, the magnet, because those are magnet specific things because there are some options to wave in and wave out and things like that. So listen from, uh, you can email either Ms. Hickman C um, and ask her that question because that is a magnet specific question. That I want to make sure you get the correct answer. Good, the correct answer about, but um, usually not at the end of semester. They can take it at the end of the year. So that is Mr. Jinx what has happened in. Oh, there she is. Look at Miss Hickman. So she's answering that one for you, Mr. Jinx. How many IB classes can you earn a certificate in if you don't want to take diploma is two. There are two required IB classes for certificate completion. All right, we answered that one and I believe I just finished all of the new questions unless yes. So let me check the published ones to make sure I haven't missed anything. AP Chemistry, Ms. Crawford answered that. AP Human Geo, we answered that. And again, those who have the AP Human Geo, those are some select. We went through over 300 freshman um, transcripts and those 22 students met that different that different combination of classes that we were looking for, performance that we were looking for. And those students are in a special AP cohort that is starting this year. And again, Mr. Robinson will meet with you concerning that and tell you about that wonderful opportunity. Um, so he'll meet with, so look for something from him about that. And I believe if I haven't missed a question, I have scrolled through the published ones and my new ones. Let me check new one more time. Yes, the meeting will be sent out. Can ban students? Yes, 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 we did that. The Google program that Miss Dr. Owens talked about, we did that. Teacher referral. I do believe, guys, I can leave and get food now. <laughs> Wait a minute, I just read the section for remote learning. This is a question not addressed. Will all students be face-to-face -face or just those that did not choose virtual? Okay, and you may not have gotten um, the, please, yes. So yes, everybody is, you went to the Fulton School site. Um, the September face-to-face -face possibility work, I cannot address, address that, but if you want it face-to-face -face and chose virtual due to the district decision, can my scholar be face-to-face? -face? Um, again, look for more from Mr. Looney about that because that September the 8th date is contingent upon what the numbers are. So we are, again, things are changing every day and we're getting updates. We got a different update today about something else. So we just want to make sure we're giving you the most up-to-date information. And we don't know what face-to-face -face and virtual possibilities will look like after the September 8th date because then numbers have to be checked. And then three weeks later, another decision has to be made. So again, look for more from Dr. Looney about that. And after reading the tables, it's technically not clear, but I will assume that it will still be an open choice. Okay, so thank you for directing. All right, thank you, Miss Stephanie B. How could, uh, did that one schedule conflict all right guys i'm going to the bottom to just make sure i've answered everything miss johnson you are awesome i try to be thank you so much it's a, it's a blessing and honor to serve y'all i love this i really really do so thank you so much thank you for your time tonight we're excited for night we're excited to have you um email me miss whoever anonymous is um i would definitely like i look forward to meeting people so um i know we can't meet right now but if you just send me an email and just say hey i'm anonymous and just want to want to actually meet you i would love to get an email from what class does ap human geo take the place of for magnet curriculum nothing again you may have missed that one miss chandria ap human geo magnet takes ap American government, um, AP, AP, um, AP American government is what magnet takes. So the AP human is something completely different. It is a cohort that we are starting here. Mr. Robinson is excited about it. And we went through and we picked from, again, over 300 students who had a combination of different things. So it's not just, oh, it's the students who did great in biology. Oh, it's this student. No, we picked. Um, there's a cohort that we've mapped out. So they needed to have a certain grade in that science class. They're going to take an honor science, but then they needed something different in social studies. They needed a different grade at math because they're going to take a math and a study skill. So it's just a different combination that we took weeks to go through all the students. And we only found that there were about 20, between 22 and 25 who fit, um, fit that bill. And he will talk directly with those 20, I believe it's at 22 right now, those 22 students who that fits. So it has nothing to do with magnet. It is something that um, is on the heart of our principal that we want to make sure we see. So um, this has been great. So for Mr. Terman, that's all the questions and I'm about to log off for my 32 people. Mr. Terman has asked to see this board thing, um, <laughs> this board that is at my house with all of the master schedules. So I have no problem sharing. The pictures that I have now, Mr. Terman, are the individual departments. So I'm going to share 
Um, I don't mind sharing them <clears throat> one by one if I have to. So let's see if I can get them to open up. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Doesn't want to open for you, Mr. Terman. <laughs> Let me see if I can zoom in. There it is. All right, so let's share. Where is the screen? All right, so just for those who were asking, um, just for giggles, kicks and giggles, because I am done, so for those who leave, but I mentioned um, what a master schedule looks like. So this is this is the science grid. So this green one is the science grid, and what this is is every single science course in the school. And these little magnets and things that you're seeing, we have to make every one of those and then decide when the biology teachers are going to be off, who's going to have the planning period. And let me get back over here. Let's see if it'll let me go to the next one. It won't. There it is. This is the social studies. So you got to imagine all these being put together. This is the world language. Um, so these are just all, and there's one for every course. There's one for every subject matter. So they're all on, and this one is upside down, forgive me, but it's a huge magnet board in my house. Normally it's in the office at the school where we all come together as administrators and we begin to then move things to make it fit for what needs to happen. So this is that moment that makes everything work. So again, that course request that you saw in Infinite Campus, when you were able to go in in um, April, it was the first through the seventh, you were able to go in and make changes to your course request and say, hey, my student wants to take African history. They want to take dance. We put all those things together. And when we, um, we see how many students requested what class, that then tells us how many we need of each section. So for instance, if we had 300 students that, well, we, for instance, I know we need 490 something spaces of just health. So what that means we go in and we divide that by how many students can fit in one class. That's how many sections we need. And we put those on the on the wall and everything has to come together. So it may only be one section of AP Biology and your student needs that one section of AP Biology. It may conflict with the advanced band. So now we have to make a choice. Advanced band was at B3 and so is that one section of AP Biology. What do we do with that student? Because now the parent says, oh wow, my student was, we were first in AP Biology, but they've been given AP Environmental Science. That is why, because you have a conflict of how all of these little little wonderful um these little wonderful magnets on <laughs> on the board at um my house looks so that is what we that is what we um do and this is the literature one if you can see that one there we go that's the literature and think we have one more. So that's just imagine all of those put together on the board and that is how we do the master schedule. So I just wanted to share that little tidbit of information because we want to make sure all the families understand the difference between a course request that you saw back in April because we get that every year. Um, the course and that's another color. Um, that's a whole nother department. So when I said it's about 600 magnets, all of these have to be put together, typed into the computer and then press a button to see where everything falls to make sure the students, the most most number of students can get their classes and it gives me a percentage. So once we put all these in a computer and say this section falls at A1, this one falls at A2, press a button, the computer will say, oh, 60 percent kids can't get their classes. Do it over. We then do it over and move some things around and say, OK, they're not able to get their world history. Let's move this. Once I press build this year, we came back with 95 percent on the first run. So what that means is 95 percent of our students were able to get what they need. Any scheduler who gets 95%, you leave that schedule, you keep it the way it is, and then you work with those couple of um, 100 students who may have to drop a change from intro to digital tech to change to intro to engineering instead, get their third choice because their first one wouldn't work. So when you see those things and you say, my child had this on their course request, this is the behind the scenes moment that I hope you're understanding why you may see something different now. No, no counselor wants to change a schedule if they don't have to. Let's make that very clear. 
if I could have 100% of all students schedule and we don't have to change a single schedule, we would love that. But we have to change schedules when things don't fit what the master schedule necessarily says, as we've explained. And then when the students take summer school, they do the 60s recovery. All of those different things make us have to adjust um, different things on your schedule. So hopefully that gave you some insight tonight. Thank you for those who have been with us, who hung in here for the whole two hours and, and however many minutes we've been on. I promise you to 8.30 and that is exactly where we are. Uh, Mr. Robinson, I'm going to let him unmute himself and say a couple of words of just closure. But again, thank you so much. Um, I hope now those people who were on from the beginning and made some mistakes with the Kahoot and the questions like who do I address any of my counseling issues with or schedule issues, all those go directly to counselors. Those go to either counselors or myself. Um, the credits that we talked about and when teachers should contact parents, all of those kind of questions that we had some, some concerns or misconceptions about at the beginning with Kahoot. I just honestly hope you have clarity tonight and you've enjoyed what we offer here. Those two documents that were put in the chat that you weren't able to see, Mr. Robinson will email that, those out along with the recording. So thank you so much. Yes, Mr. Terman, it will be sent out um, this team meeting will be sent out. Oh, you sent that long time ago. Okay, so everything has been answered. So again, you will get the email with the recording as well as the two documents. Thank you. It has been my honor to be with you all, um, all this time tonight. It's time for me to go eat dinner and drink some water. So it has been a pleasure. Email me at Johnson C5 if you have any more questions. And again, it's an honor to serve you. Have a wonderful night. Mr. Robinson will tell you a few words to close us out right at 830. Y'all have a wonderful night. Good evening, Good evening. I just don't want to keep anybody, anybody uh, any longer because I know you I know guys are here all night. I truly appreciate your time. As you can see, we have the best curriculum assistant principal and the best counselors uh, hands uh, uh, across this district and probably across the state. So I just want to say thank you to everyone for staying here with us tonight. I hope you found this information helpful. We'll continue to send information and have meetings of this type uh, as we go on because I know communication is essential in these unprecedented times. So uh, thank you to my new families. I want you to know I'm 100% behind you, supporting you, to my family that have been with me uh, since last year, over the last year. Uh, that, uh, that I'm here. here. Thank, Thank you for you your support. support. We are here in this together. together. You know, you know how, how we operate. And we come together, together as one. There is there no goal uh, uh, that we can accomplish, no problem, problem that we cannot conquer. conquer. So, so thank, thank you, everyone. You, everyone. Uh, um, all of the information will be shared on our YouTube page and through our social media. I appreciate you guys. Have a great and blessed night. And we will continue to see you as we march towards opening school on August 17th. Have a great night.